Oh, yeah. All right. Hi, I'm James Panero. I'm uh, the managing editor of the New Criterion, and uh, I'm an art critic. I write for New Criterion's Gallery Chronicle and uh, for the Wall Street Journal and a couple other venues. And uh, we're here today at Storefront Bushwick in Bushwick, Brooklyn. And uh, the reason I wanted to come here today is this is one of the galleries I tend to cover in my Chronicle. Uh, it's one that excites me and um, I'm always interested in the shows they have. I haven't seen this show yet, so I'm seeing it here for the first time. And um, I brought my daughter, Lily, who uh, always gives me all my good advice. Right? Yeah. Okay. So should we take a look around? Yeah, I'll pick you up. Huh? You can see it from here? The, um, these, uh, I, I've seen Tatiana Berg's paintings a little bit, not that much, and I, like this example over here, I think is, um, it represents the kind of casual, um, like a casual abstract look that you tend to see out in Bushwick. Uh, there are a lot of painters who are kind of working with the same idea. Another thing I see is that in, there is, tends to be abstraction on a smaller scale here in Bushwick than what you got, let's say, in Soho in the 1970s. I think one reason for that is um, a lot of the artists are working in smaller spaces. They just don't have the, the enormous loft space that you had in the 70s to make those large canvases. And it also allows, the smaller scale allows um, for artists to, uh, well, the material cost is less, the price point is less, they can trade it, they can hang it in, in, their, in their friends' um, studios, and so there's a kind of a communal aspect about this size. It's something that's like, a, it's an exchange quality to it. I like that about it. It's also, I think, uh, domestic, and it, in my opinion, looks great in apartments, for example. Not everyone has enormous law spaces to exhibit those big paintings. I wish I did, but I don't. So, um, this is one of, I think, there are now over 40 galleries in the Bushwick, Ridgewood area, and this is a development that's occurred only in the last couple of years, where uh, I think you had maybe 35 a year ago, and five years ago maybe you had half a dozen. So you see the rapid advancement of what's going on here. And I'm interested in the way neighborhoods develop, artistic neighborhoods. Um, I'm someone who studied the rise of Montparnasse, for example, in Paris, and what you see is these neighborhoods kind of coming out of nowhere and just an enormous density of artists cram in, often very quickly. And it's in those circumstances that you tend to have the, the fastest and the most interesting artistic developments. The same thing happened in Soho in the 1970s, where a pretty much unused um, loft industrial space that doesn't look at all like it looks today. The shops, I mean, there was nothing there. Artists tended to live there, move in often illegally, take, in the, take up these old places, and it was packed with artists. And with that, you had a kind of cross-pollination of ideas, and the paintings developed in a very interesting way very quickly there for that reason. The same thing I see happening here. There's a parallel, I think, in the studio practices that you see in Bushwick today and the studio practices you see with the great Soho artists of the 1970s. Experimental. There tends to be an interest, I think, in paint. It's not that conceptual. Um, it's more of a kind of process-based studio practice, and it t that tends to be the artwork that I'm interested in, too. I think what's also interesting is that um, what I've noticed writing about the art world uh, is that the market for art seems to not be in parallel with my own interest in art. And I, I think once you realize that, you'll see there's kind of two, been two parallel developments. One is the art market, especially since the 1980s, that has really taken off in one direction, the kind of pop art direction. And then you have the artists, like the Soho artists and the Bushwick artists, who I think are content. It doesn't mean they're not selling their paintings, but they're content not to necessarily operate in that or for that particular market. And, you know, uh, once you realize that you don't need the market to determine your taste, you can see there's a lot of great artwork out there. And if you're a, a collector, it's a great time to collect this art because it's not being valued, in my opinion, the way it will one day be valued. 